to have you all here with us this morning. Today's going to be fun. Uh, if you're adventurous, then uh, you really enjoy this. And uh, I know I've seen you fanning this morning. I want you to know that uh, the thermostat was turned down another couple of degrees for those of you who are sweating like drops of blood this morning. We want to make sure you're, you're good and cool. I'm actually high, and I don't have a thyroid, so um, it's, it's good for it to, the air conditioner to be turned down this morning. Well, today, uh, we've got, instead of us talking about end times, we're going to finish that series the next couple of weeks. Thank you. And... Uh, today, since we were going to have a Halloween Jesus festival, I wanted to, to share something that went along with the activities that were going to be going on uh, after worship this morning. By the way, isn't baptism the best way to, op to open worship ever? Amen? Amen. And thankful for those two men who uh, put their faith in Jesus and were able to uh, go under this morning. Um, Matt, thank you for taking care of that. Brother, that is a blessing, man, and I know, I know you enjoyed it as well, so thank you for being willing to do that. Being Christian is uh, a lot like being a pumpkin. We'll talk about that in, in just a minute, but if I were to come around and do a quick survey, or maybe just by a show of hands, I, there, there's probably at least 25% chance, if I ask you what your favorite season is, someone in here is going to say the fall. Any, your favorite season is fall? All right. Well, fall just happens to be my favorite time of the year. I love it. I love to, to see the leaves changing color. Matter of fact, yesterday morning, this is the first time I've done it since we've moved to Trenton. Yesterday morning, I got up early. I, I always get up early. I, I got my, my little mushroom coffee. Don't laugh at me. I got my little mushroom coffee, and uh, I went out on the back patio, and I just sat as the sun was getting higher in the sky, you know, you were beginning to be able to, to see um, the backyard and the leaves as, you know, they're kind of shuffling around, they're falling off the trees, squirrels are playing. I love this season. It's, it's just marvelous for me, and, and it lets me know, it's a reminder for me, just like spring is, that this is the season where things begin to die because at some point in the near future, they're going to come to life again. And I love this season. I, I love to be able to watch the football games. It's, it's amazing for me to be able to spend time with family and friends, to, to watch a game, to argue and fuss with calls that we see the refs making. And sometimes we, we argue with one another because, you know, we're rooting for opposing teams. That's okay, too. Uh, we occasionally do those things, right? And it's marvelous to be able to spend that time together. You know, you, you go to the grill, you, you put some hamburgers on, maybe you've, you've spent the last eight, ten hours with a, a pork on the, uh, on the grill and you smoked it really good, you take it, and you just spend time with family and loved ones. There's nothing better, is there? And so we have these, these moments, these events, these um, holidays that have come along over the years, and one of them is Halloween. And I'm going to be honest with you, Halloween is, uh, if, you, if, you, if you take it the wrong way spiritually, it'll drag you down, it'll take you to a place that you don't want to go spiritually, because it really is, whether you want to believe it or not, about celebrating demons and Satan and those type things. As a matter of fact, I know for sure I have read it in uh, some, uh, some, some research that I have done that Satanists actually prayed to Satan over the candies that are given away to kids during this season. And so you need to make sure the candies that we're giving, the candies that you are giving, have been prayed over in the name of Jesus. Amen? Because we don't want Satan to be the one glorified in this. And so we as Christians are taking it back because in all things, King Jesus is to be honored and glorified. And so we've got this Halloween Jesus festival today here. 
in November, we're going to celebrate with one another Thanksgiving. How many of you enjoy spending time with family and friends during Thanksgiving? Amen? Thanksgiving, I love Christmas, but Thanksgiving is one of my all-time favorite seasons together. There's no gift giving. I don't have to spend money on anything but food. It's good at the Patterson house during Thanksgiving. Plus, I don't have to do any cooking, so it's extra good. Then we've got Christmas, and that's just around the corner, and then we have Easter. So, so there are seasons where we're able to celebrate a lot of different things, and fall is absolutely, unequivocally one of my all-time favorite seasons. I hope you enjoy the changing of the seasons, too. Today, what I want to do is I'm going to walk you through, um, I guess, an activity, because we're going to carve a pumpkin together, and we're going to see how this pumpkin can be transformed, and it is representative of, at least this morning, it's going to be representative of, and like being a Christian. And I hope you understand and you get it. There are five truths that I want to share with you. I know that worries you, don't it? Because you were here last Sunday and you remember 55 minutes of, oh my goodness, is he ever going to shut up? We're going to have some mornings like that, um, but not many of them will be that 55-minute mark. But I do hope you uh, were educated and you enjoyed last week's sermon as well. well. We'll pick that up next Sunday and we'll carry that on through. The first thing I want to share with you, how, um, how being a Christian is like a pumpkin. Number one is this. God picks you from the patch and he brings you in. I love this. Think about it for a moment. God didn't have to send his son Jesus to the earth to die for an old sinner like me, did he? But because he did that, he gave sinners like you and I an opportunity to acknowledge that we are a sinner in need of a Savior, to believe on Jesus. So God made the first step. God made the first move by sending his son to be born in a manger, to live the perfect sinless life, to go to the cross, to die on an old cut down tree, to have his blood shed, the weight of the world literally upon his shoulders, buried in a borrowed tomb, three days later, busted the gates of hell wide open when he rose from the grave. He chose to do those things. He chose to come down and invade this realm that God created through his son Jesus to save sinners such as you and I. He invaded earth to save us. So God made the first move. God picks you from the patch and he brings you in. John chapter 15 verse 16 says this. You didn't choose me. Jesus is talking to the disciples. He's gone around the Sea of Galilee and he's, he's just seen some old roughneck boys like a lot of you guys out there this morning, like me. No, nothing special to us. Matter of fact, if you, if you see us on any given weekend or, or maybe a... Uh, an afternoon, if you come to the house before we've gotten cleaned up, you'll find grease underneath our fingernails. You'll find dirt on our blue jeans because we've been at the gas company or we've been at the uh, light and water department where we've been in a ditch digging in the dirt. You'll see that we've been in factories and we're just dirty and we're nasty. And none of those things matter when it comes to coming to the Lord Jesus. The great thing about my Savior is he'll take you just like you are, and then he'll do the rest. I love that truth. And so you didn't choose me, Jesus told the disciples, but I chose you and I appointed you that you should go and you should bear fruit, that your fruit should abide, that your fruit should remain. In other words, when you make a decision to follow Jesus, you need to make sure your decision is firm. You don't need to get to a point in your life where you decide because life is hard, I'm not going to follow Jesus anymore because I'm going to tell you if that's you and you backtrack on Jesus, I believe that you were never a child of God to begin with. I, I don't want that to hurt your feelings, but I just think that's gospel truth. And so you need to know you've got to work out your own salvation. If you're going to follow Jesus, Jesus himself said, don't, no one can put their hand to the plow and look back. If you do, you're not worthy. And so make sure if you're going to follow Jesus, you're going to jump in with everything you've got. You remember that when he went to the cross, he jumped in with everything 
for you. He didn't leave anything in the Garden of Gethsemane. He went all in for you in the Garden of Gethsemane is what led him to the cross where he willingly gave his life for the sins of many. And our goal, our job, just like Jesus told the disciples here, now you're to go and you're to bear fruit, that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, that he may give you these things I've commanded you so that you will love one another. So the whole purpose of, of God sending his son Jesus down in, to be born into this world, to, to live that perfect sinless life, is so that he could set men and women like you and I free from our sins. And so he comes, he finds the old messiest, dirtiest, ugliest one of us in that old pumpkin patch, and he says, yeah, I like how that one looks. I want that one. And I'm thankful that he chose someone like me to be his. I'm thankful that he allowed me the opportunity to repent and come to Jesus. I'm so thankful that when God the Father sent God the Son, that he died for someone as messed up, ugly, and dirty as I am. Amen? And so, taking the disciples, he was speaking to them because they were all different. Every one of them, just like you and I, just like a pumpkin. If you go into a pumpkin patch, None of them are going to be exactly the same. They're all going to be different. Some may be the same size. Some may have a, a, a longer stem than others. Some may have some deformities on the, the top or the bottom. Some may have some scars on the back. doesn't make any difference. God says, I'm willing to take it just like it is. And I want you to understand that God's willing to take you just like you are. The first thing is he, God picks you from the pumpkin patch and he brings you in. The second thing is this, and, and two and three really walk closely together. The second thing is this, then he washes all the dirt off of you. I love that. A lot of people have this grandi, uh, grandioso idea that, that they're going to get right with the Lord and then they're going to come to him. I, I got to clean up. I, I don't want to come to the Lord like I am. I'm filthy. I'm dirty. There's no way he's going to accept me the way I am. And I want you to know that's exactly what he wants is that you would come to him just like you are because you'll never be able to clean yourself good enough. You're always going to leave some filth somewhere behind your ears and between your Toe, you know, a toe, toe jam and stuff like that. Because I, you, you, we'll move on from that. But the reality is, Jesus is willing to take you like you are, and then Him start the cleaning process. And so He gets that rag, and He just starts rubbing you down. And he gets all that old filth, all that old grime, everything that's on you that's nasty, everything that you collect from the world. He makes sure that he does everything within his power. When he went to the cross, he, he didn't go for just part of you. He went for all of you, and he's not going to leave any stone unturned when it comes to making sure that you are able to stand before him, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so he cleanses you all off. Every crevice to make sure that when you stand before him one day, you'll be able to stand before him knowing that you have been washed clean by the blood of the lamb. And I love that. I love that he's willing to take me just like I am and wash all the dirt off. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, say, in Christ. He is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Just outwardly, you see that this pumpkin is different than it was just a few minutes ago. It's now clean because it's been washed with this actually old wet rag that we just brought down from the kitchen. So uh, I, I don't know who's going to wash that for me in the washer, but you can take, take it home with you after. But the, sec the third thing goes with number two. Then he washes all the dirt off. The third thing is this, and then he opens you up and he scoops out all the yucky stuff. Isn't that good? I don't know. I'm not real good at this. We're going to try. Uh, let's see what we can come up with. 
What are we going to create? We're going to create something that's got a really big head on it. Oh, oh. oh nasty, isn't it? I need a spoon. Who's got one? Nobody? You don't have a spoon, Matt? What good are you this morning? Man! Well, I failed this morning. I hope you're still able to catch the vision. I didn't bring a spoon. So, um, <laughs> Matt said, you want me to go get you one? I'm like, well, it's too late now. <laughs> I've already started this sucker. Look. The point is, <laughs> is that he opens you up. And he cleans you out. Y'all see that? You young and you see this? We're going to make... Now, if y'all want this for a pumpkin puree or anything, I'll save it. I won't put it in the dirty part. Um, but we've got to clean it all out. And, and you know the great thing about the Lord, as long as it takes, is the amount of time he takes to get all that mess out of you. Some of you, I, I'm not being ugly, but sometimes it takes longer for some of us, like me, for the Lord to get all that old yunky, yucky, gunky stuff out. And so he continues to work his way in, and he's always carving us into the image of his son. God the Father is always doing a work in us. He's always cleaning that mess out of us. He's always going a step further than anyone else would be willing to go for you. And he does everything within his power to make sure that you are all clean. I love that about my Jesus. And so Romans chapter 6, verse 6, says this. It says, we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing. This old yunky, yucky mess here, can you see that? That's what sin looks like in our lives. It's a mess, isn't it? But what does the Lord do? He takes us and he cleans us up. And he's the only one that can do it. And so that the sin, that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. How many of you can say this morning that you don't want to be enslaved to sin anymore. That you don't want to have it rule you. Because when we live in the flesh, that's exactly what happens. Sin rules our body. Sin rules our flesh. And so we see that God picks us from the pumpkin patch and he brings us in. We see that he washes all the dirt off of us, that he opens us up and he, he scoops out all of that yucky stuff for you and I is what he's doing is he's he removing those seeds of doubt. Anybody ever had doubt planted in your heart about anything? Sometimes it's there, isn't it? So he, he scoops that seed of, of doubt out. Seeds of hate. He scoops them out. They don't belong there if you're now a child of God. You're being made clean. You're not the same person. The old is gone. The new has come. And so that hatred that you've had toward this person or that person or that group of people or this group of people, it can't exist anymore if you are in Christ, if you have been cleaned out, if your sin has been washed white as snow. And so then he carves you a new smiling face. Now, I don't know how successful I'm going to be at this, but we're going to try. Um, is a, a triangle, that's like three sides, right? Is that, let's see. <laughs> I wish y'all would have given me a dull knife. Well, we plucked one eye. Let's see. Oh, our eyes are not going to be the same size. <laughs> well, they're not going to be bad, although this one has an infection in it. 
That's better. Let's see. We're not going to worry about a nose this morning. Is that okay? Don't laugh at me. I'm really trying. Popped right out. That's actually where I wanted that. Uh, Y'all probably wouldn't believe me if it hadn't happened just like I uh, expected it to. Psalm 71 verse 23 says this. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praises to you. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praises to you. My soul also which you have redeemed. My soul is different than it's ever been because Jesus has picked me from the pumpkin patch. He's washed all the dirt. He's cleaned all the the yucky, hateful, nasty stuff out of my soul. He's filled it with love and grace and mercy and forgiveness because that's what he does. And now he's carved a new smiling face on me because I belong to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That's what he does when he comes and takes you from where you were and takes you to where you're going. How many of you know that this this place we're in right now, this isn't the final destination, amen? We've got a home promised for us in glory where we will be one day, not because of anything you've done, but because of what God the Father did through God the Son by dying on that old rugged cross, by being raised on the third day. And so here we are, we're coming together quite nicely. And then the last thing that I want to share with you, number five, before we get to the takeaway, is this. He puts his light in you to shine for all the world to see. Dim the lights, somebody. Turn them off. I don't care what you do. Matt, click that light right over there. I think you can still see them, can't you? Let's see. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. They're not going to stand up. Is that all right? Let's see if I can put the lid on properly. Shining pretty good, isn't it? This is what the Lord does. He, he puts his light in you then, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen? He puts his light in you to shine for all the world to see. Um, Would you flip that light back on for me, Matt? I can't read now. (coughs) Don't laugh at me, laugh with me. Matthew 5, 16 says this, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Now the purpose of you as an individual who has repented of your sins, who has put your faith in Jesus to be Lord of your life, now your job is to let the light of Christ shine outwardly into the world, into the community, into your family's life, into your workspace, wherever you are, so that those people who are far from God might see Christ in you, so that prayerfully, maybe, maybe hopefully one day, they will acknowledge they are two sinners in need of a Savior. So here's the takeaway of the day. Question number one is this. Are you following Jesus? I know that's terrible. Following Jesus. I'm not smart enough to come up with that, by the way, the, the following Jesus part. But if you are following Jesus, let your light shine. If so, Shine your light for God's honor and God's glory. Pretty quick. I was trying to make up for last week. But the truth is still the same. None of us are going to escape this earth without being changed. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Either Jesus will come back for the church and He will rapture us before you breathe your last breath this out of heaven. If you are in Christ, you'll be caught up 
to meet the Lord in the air and then you'll always be with the Lord or you will breathe your last breath this side of heaven and you will open your eyes face to face with King Jesus to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord if you are in Christ or this is the one no one likes to hear you will die in your trespass and sin you will avoid heaven because you have denied Jesus, the one who died for you, the one who was buried in a borrowed tomb, the one who busted the gates of hell wide open, the one who rose on the third day, the one who ascended to the right hand of the Father in heaven and is there mediating between you and the Lord this very moment on your behalf. If you are in Christ, if you are not in Christ, you'll be eternally separated from God the Father and be cast eternally into this place called hell. Listen to me. Death is no joke. None of us know when it's co coming for us. We don't know when the death angel is calling on us. So make sure today that you've done some house cleaning. Make sure today, if you've not said yes to Jesus, that you repent of your sin and that you believe on Christ to be Lord of all in your life. That you call him King of kings and Lord of lords. Just as he is, he's willing to take you and then he's willing to do the rest and clean you up if you will acknowledge that you were a sinner and believe on Jesus to be Lord of your life. We're going to have an invitation, and I don't know what decision you need to make today. But we're going to have an opportunity, and then we're going to leave here, and we're going to go to the gym, and we're going to have our following Jesus festival. So I want to encourage you to stand this morning. Listen to me, church. Maybe over the years your light has gone dim. Maybe the difficulties of life, the struggles, the circumstances that surround you, maybe they've caused your battery to grow weak. If that's so, that's okay. There's a recharge button that you can push. You can be re-energized. It's called prayer. It's called repentance. Come back to Jesus. Go back to the power source this morning. But today, if you're not in Christ, today, believe on Jesus to be Lord of your life.